Our celebration this morning begins on page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you declare your almighty power, chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that we running to obtain your promises may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the 10th year of King Zedekiah of Judah, which was the 18th year of Zebuchadnezzar. At that time, the army of the king of Babylon was besieging Jerusalem, and the prophet Jeremiah was confined in the court of the guard that was in the palace of the king of Judah where King Zedekiah of Judah had confined him. Jeremiah said, The word of the Lord came to me. Hanamel, son of your uncle Shalom, is going to come to say, going to come to you and say, Buy my field that is an Anathoth, for the right of redemption by purchase is yours. Then my cousin Hanimal came to me in the court of the guard in the accordance with the word of the Lord and said to me, Buy my field that is at Anathoth in the land of Benjamin, for the right of possession and redemption is yours. Buy it for yourself. Then I knew that this was the word of the Lord. And I bought the field at Ananoth from my cousin Hanamel and weighed out the money to him 
17 shackles of silver. I signed the deed, sealed it, got witnesses, and weighed the money on scales. Then I took the sealed deed of purchase containing the terms and conditions and the open copy, and I gave the deed to, of purchase to Baruch, son of Ner Neriah, son of Messiah, th in the presence of my cousin Hanamel, in the presence of the witness who signed the deed of purchase, and in the presence of all the Judeans who were sitting in the court of guard. In their presence, I charged Baruch, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, take these deeds, both the sealed deed of purchase and this open deed, and put them in an earthenware jar, in order that they may last for a long time. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, houses and fields and vineyards shall again be bought in this land. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks. Thanks be to God. The response appointed for today is Psalm 91, verses 1 through 6 and 14 to 16. Let us pray this psalm responsively by whole verse. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. She shall say to the Lord, you are my refuge and my stronghold, my God in whom I put my trust. He shall deliver you from the snare of the hunter and from the deadly pestilence. He shall cover you with his pinions, and you shall find refuge under his wings. His faithfulness shall be a shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of any terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, of the plague that stalks in the darkness, nor of the sickness that lays waste at midday. Because he is bound to me in love, therefore will I deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. She shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I am with him in trouble. I will rescue him and bring him to honor. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. A reading from the first letter of Paul to Timothy. There is great gain in godliness combined with contentment, for we brought nothing into the world so that we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, and in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. But as for you, man of God, shun all this. Pursue righteousness godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you, were, you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Christ Jesus, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession. I charge you to keep the commandment without spot or blame until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about 
at the right time. He who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords, it is he alone who has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. As for those who in the present age are rich, command them not to be haughty or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of the life that really is life. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Hymn number 583. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus 
covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus, in like manner, evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that, they, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. May the words of my mouth and the meditations in our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. In December of 1982, I arrived just before Christmas at St. Andrew the Apostle in Rocky Hill, Connecticut to be their new rector. And then shortly after the holidays, I think it was the second week in January, I was invited to go to my first clergy conference, clergy day, in the Diocese of Connecticut. So off I went up to Hartford, to the cathedral, Christ Church Cathedral in Hartford, where clergy day was to be held. Now, if you know anything about uh, the cathedral in Hartford, it sits on one corner of Main Street and a side street, and right across the street is the parish house which is about a three or four story building, Gothic building, and that's where the offices of the uh, cathedral are. So anyway, I found a place to park. I was not familiar with Hartford, and I found my way to the parish house. And as I entered, I went up these long, majestic stairs, and I opened the door. And there was this waiting area that was about as large as this church, maybe a little bit bigger, and it was filled with people. And these people looked to me a bit disheveled. Some were... Um, a bit dirty uh, and a little gaunt and haggard, if you will. Uh, others were there with little kids. Um, some were sleeping on benches. Some were on the floor sleeping. And it was just a, a mass of humanity. And I noticed over in the corner in the back of the room there was a, a desk where there was a woman sitting, and I thought, well, maybe she's a receptionist for the cathedral, and I was right. So I made my way through this throng of humanity over to the desk, and I said, where are the clergy meeting? And she said, upstairs in the auditorium. And I said, okay, fine, thank you. But then I turned to her and I said, who are all these people and why are they here? And she said, well, they're all here looking for financial assistance. She said, we have so many people come into the cathedral on a weekly basis that we've decided now it's necessary to have two times during the week when clergy will see people that walk in off the street. Tuesday afternoon from 1 until 4, Thursday afternoon from 1 until 4. And I said, but you know, it's like 9 in the morning. And she said, they come early and they take a number. 
and then they wait. And she said, it's warm in here, and so they stay, and we don't mind that, that's okay. Now, the reason I tell you this story is because every time I read the gospel today, I think about that, that episode in January of 1983, because I literally had to step over people to get to my meeting. I mean, they were laying on the floor asleep, and I'm kind of over and over and around, and, and I finally got to where I was going. And poor Lazarus, who lays at the gate of this rich man day after day, a poor wretch who has sores on his body and is taking scraps or literally garbage from the rich man's house to feed himself, lays in front of the man's door day after day. This man literally has to step over Lazarus to get home. And yet he ignores him day after day. He probably turns his gaze so he doesn't have to see him. And he steps over and negotiates around him, if you will. Now, what's going on in this story? It's a nice, it's a great story. Um, Jesus is telling this story to the Pharisees because the Pharisees are one of the Jewish sects that actually believes in life after death. The Sadducees do not, but the Pharisees do. And so he knows his audience is going to believe in an afterlife, so he's talking about that afterlife. And he knows the Pharisees also believe that if you're successful in this life, you'll curry favor with God in the life hereafter. And what he basically says in this story is, now wait a minute, hang on. There's a great reversal that goes on. Uh, he said, it doesn't matter how successful you've been, it matters how much you're willing to share how compassionate you are, how much empathy you have for your fellow human beings. That's what really matters. Now, if you dig into the story, you realize that this guy hasn't done anything really evil, this rich man. He, he's not a murderer. He's not an adulterer. God is not, he's not stealing from people. Uh, Jesus is not condemning him for that. His sin, if you will, is a sin of omission. It's not something he's done. It's something he's failed to do. He's failed to respond with compassion to this poor person at his door. He's very self-absorbed. That's his problem. Now, in the story, Jesus names the poor wretch. He's Lazarus. And we know that Lazarus literally translated means God helps. So this is, this is the figure who's got his name written in the book of heaven, if you will. God will help you, Lazarus. The rich man is not named. Jesus doesn't give him a name, but later generations of Christians who have read this story have given him a name. They call him Deves, which is Latin for rich man, just simply rich man. Um, he, you know, he's concerned. He realizes that his, his lot now is, it's fixed. He can't change it. There's a chasm between heaven and hell. He's in hell. And so he says to Father Abraham, do these things for me. Now, you notice even from hell, he's still treating Lazarus as an inferior. He doesn't negotiate with Lazarus. He doesn't say, Lazarus, oh, please, Lazarus, get me a drink, or would you go and talk to my brothers? No, he says to Father Abraham, would you send Lazarus to do these things? And, of course, Father Abraham says, well, during life you had your comforts. Lazarus did not. It's reversed now. And he said, well, at least send him to my brothers so that they may repent and amend their lives before it's too late for them. And what is Father Abraham's response? It's rather harsh. He says, they've got Moses, they've got the prophets, and now Luke tells us in this story they also have the Son of God telling, him, telling them what they should be doing. If they won't listen to them, they're not going to be convinced by some man who returns from the dead. Um, it reminds me of that story that we're all familiar with. You know, the story of the man in the flood the guy who's, you know, the flood is coming and he's in his house and his neighbor knocks on the door and says, come with me, get in my car and we'll get out of here before the flood comes. And he says, no, no, God will protect me. I trust in God. God will save me. And so the guy drives off. And then the flood waters come and they're coming into the house and a neighbor comes by in a boat, canoe, and says, he's paddles, get in, get in, we'll paddle to shore, we'll get out of here. And he goes, no, nope, no, nope, I trust in God. God will save me. A little bit later, he's on the second floor now because the water's rising. Some rescue workers come by in a motorboat and say, get in, get in, and we'll take you to shore. And 
Same response. No, I trust in God. God will protect me. God will save me. Finally, the waters have gotten so high, he's on the roof of his house. A helicopter comes by and drops a line down and says, grab it, grab it, and we'll take you to dry land. No, I trust in God, and God will save me. And so off goes the helicopter. Well, we know what happens. The waters rise, and he drowns, and he ends up in heaven, and he says to God, what did you do? I trusted in you, and you didn't save me. And we all know what the answer is. God says, I sent a car. I sent a canoe. I sent a boat. And I sent a helicopter. And you didn't figure it out. I sent Moses. I sent the prophets. I sent my only son. And you can't figure it out, is what he's telling the Pharisees today. You know. um, I find that this story is a companion to chapter 25 in Matthew's Gospel verse 31 and following, the great judgment. Jesus separates the sheep from the goats. And of course, the sheep who are blessed by his Father to go into heaven are the ones who have, as Jesus says, you fed me when I was hungry, you gave me drink when I was thirsty, you clothed me when I was naked, you gave me shelter when I had none. And of course, the righteous goats say, wait a minute, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or naked? We would have helped if we had seen you in that situation. And Jesus' response is, well, as you did it to the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you did it to me. In other words, you didn't do it to them. You didn't share. You weren't compassionate. Uh, the simple uh, moral today, I think, is that our actions matter more than our words. Um, you know, what we believe, credo, is not as important in God's eyes as how we act and what we do and how we share. As it says in Timothy, be generous. Be sharing. That's what God expects from us. You know, we can argue with Christians about what the proper theology is, but God doesn't really care. God wants us to act. He wants us to be motivated. Um, and how can we do that? You know, we can't be Mother Teresa. We can't give up our lives and all go to India and live in the streets. But we can do simple things. We can give money to organizations and charities that feed the hungry and clothe them. Uh, you know, we can volunteer at a food pantry or a clothing closet or something, you know. Uh, we can do what the people of Martha's Vineyard have done in the last week or two. When a crisis is dumped in their lap, they respond with love and compassion. Open their homes. Open St. Andrew's. St. Andrew's is a neat little place, and the rector there is a good friend of mine. I found it interesting that when all that descended on Martha's Vineyard, he was down in North Carolina at a conference, but... I think he got back at some point. Um, but yeah, we have to respond. It's, it's how we act that matters in the eyes of God. It's how we're motivated by coming here every Sunday and not just sitting in the pew and going home and say, well, that was a nice service. No, how does it motivate us to go out and be the agents of God in simple sharing? Because that's how we'll be judged, not by what we believe, but how we act. Let us pray. Lord, it often takes courage to, to take a step out and do something that's a little bit beyond our comfort level, to share, to get involved. But we pray that you will give us, through your Spirit, the courage to do that, because we understand that that's what you want from us. You want us to care for our neighbors, to love them, to have sympathy and compassion for them. And so cultivate that in our hearts through your indwelling Spirit. And we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Let us profess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, 
He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Blessed God, whose love calls the whole creation into covenant with you, and who calls humanity as stewards of the earth and its creatures. We pray for all to whom you have given life and being, saying, merciful God, okay. keep your planet and people in peace. For the well-being of the earth, for its resources of water, air, light, and soil, that they may be tended for the good of all creatures, we pray. Merciful God, keep your people in peace. For the waters of the earth, for their careful use and conservation, that we may have the will and the ability to keep them clean and pure, we pray. Merciful God, keep your planet and people in peace. For the mineral and energy resources of the planet, that we may learn sustainable consumption and sound care of the environment from which they come, we pray. Merciful God, keep your planet and people in peace. For the animals of the earth, wild and domestic, large and very small, that they may know the harmony of relationship that sustains all life, we pray. Merciful God, keep your planet and people in peace. For your church and its leaders, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, Thomas, our own bishop, Shannon and Rob, our assisting bishops, and for Steve, Andrew, Chris, and Gail, our clergy, that we may awaken ourselves and the world to the beauty of your world, we pray. Merciful God, keep your planet and people in peace. For all who shape public policies affecting the planet and its creatures, especially Joseph, our president, and Janet, our governor, that they may consider wisely the well-being of all who come after us, we pray. Merciful God, keep your planet and people in peace. For all those engaged in conservation, in agriculture and ranching, in aquaculture and fishing, in mining and industry and in forestry and timber harvesting, that the health, fruitfulness, and beauty of the natural world may be sustained alongside human activity, we pray. Merciful God, keep your planet and people in peace. For all who suffer from the unjust, violent, or wasteful use of the Earth's resources or their devastation by war, that all may come one day live in communities of justice and peace. And for all the creatures and the human beings of your world who are ill or in danger, pain, or special need, especially Jim, Sue, Mary, Jackie, Jamie, Patty, Roland, Louise, Suzanne, Maureen, Michelle, Delta, Elaine, Dorothy, Davis, Sue Cryer, Sue Courier, Carolyn, Norm, Bob, Nancy, Sheila, Donna Bacon, Jillian, Donna Costello, and Barbara. Also for friends and family listed in the bulletin, we pray. 
Merciful God, God, keep keep your your planet planet and people in peace. For the creatures and the people of the earth whose lives and deaths have contributed to the fruitful abundance of this planet, giving thanks especially for Kelly White, in whose memory the vigil candle is lit, we pray. Merciful God, keep Keep your your planet planet and people people in peace. peace. Gracious God, grant that your people may have in them the same mind that was in Christ Jesus, and guide us into harmony of relationship through loving kindness and the wise use of all that you have given. For you are drawing all things into communion with you and with each other by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. Peace, peace, peace. Please be seated. Announcements. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Gail Freeman, and on the behalf of our vestry, I welcome you again to St. David's today for this worship service. There's a lot of announcements in your bulletin. I would pray that you would read them all carefully. I'll highlight a few for you. First of all, um, on October the 8th, I believe that's correct. Yes, from uh, 10 to 12, you have a wonderful opportunity to spend some time down at the Wells Reserve, um, exploring that land and learning what it meant to the first inhabitants of this land. And um, we're fortunate to have one of the historians down there who's going to do what she calls the Wabanaki Wandering Tour. It's two hours, you have the time to spend some time outside, learn about the reserve, and also to learn more about the first inhabitants on the land that our church sits on. So I encourage anyone interested to contact me. There's still some places available for this opportunity. Um, Please see me after worship if you're interested. The ministry fair, which we're continuing to hold, you will find sheets on the table out in the uh, Great Hall. There's many opportunities to serve in our many ministries here at St. David's. Please take time to look at those opportunities and find out where God is calling you to serve. Actions are important as we learn today and actions are always important in our ministries to those in need and to those within our parish. So please look at those sheets. If you have questions, people will be out there to help you answer them. Also, we're doing a sabbatical reflection during uh, Andrew's time away each month. We're asking for comments from the parish about certain aspects of our life together, and Vestry will be reviewing these to try to determine what we can do in our own reflection as a parish 
to make um, the parish life more fulfilling for each of you. So the question, the reflection for September is what gives you life, what motivates you as an individual and as a parish? There's an easel sheet out in the Great Hall. Please just write on there what, you know, the response to one of those questions. Um, and conversation, of course, is always encouraged about that during coffee hour. I would also say just this coming October the 1st, there's blessing of the animals down at the budget box. So those of you who have pets who you want to have blessed, please show up down there. Um, it's going to be at 11 a.m. Um, so hopefully any of you who have little ones who need that blessing will come there. Chris? I'm going to do my announcement from here. We are a little behind on our uh, donations to our local food pantry. Hands across our community is what we've called it here. And so I've got the envelopes. I spent hours handcrafting these. No. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, at our recent um, outreach meeting, outreach has pledged for the months of September, October, November, and December to donate $250 a month. We're asking to see if the congregation can come up with that same amount. You don't have to do all 250, but if you are so inclined to do so, that's fine too. But um, these envelopes will be out and we'll see if we can match month by month so that at the end of the year, we know we've done our part to feed those that are hungry in the communities of Kenny Bunk, Kenny Bunk Port, and Arundel. I'll leave these out. You can put them in your um, in the collection plate if you have want to do it today. But I will always have the envelopes out and thank you in advance. Thank you, Chris. Any other announcements? Okay. Hearing none. Thank you for your attention. I just want to say that the strangest animal that I've ever blessed is a tarantula. I actually laid my hands on a tarantula. <laughs> I trust none of you have pet tarantulas for Saturday, but you know, we do exotic things are okay. <laughs> Welcome to St. David's. If you're visiting today, uh, we're thrilled you're here. Uh, please know that you're invited to come and receive communion. We uh, invite all seekers and followers of Jesus to join us at the altar for communion. If you'd like to come and are not familiar with Episcopal tradition, you put your right hand on your left, you will receive a host. Uh, if you'd like to receive a gluten-free host, one hand. If you want to participate but not take communion, cross your arms on your chest and we'll give you a blessing. The wine, the chalice of wine will follow. We are not administering that at the moment with the pandemic, but uh, it comes around reminding us that it's part of uh, our tradition, our sacramental tradition. So, Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time, you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread gave thanks to you, broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine, and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your Spirit over the whole earth, and make us your new creation the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with David and all your saints 
from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God, holy things for holy people. the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 <clears throat> the body of Christ, the bread of heaven the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, 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 the bread of heaven. The 
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. of this church, bearing the sacrament of our Lord's presence. May you carry forth as well our prayers, the love of this congregation, and the spirit of oneness in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Let us pray together the post-communion prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Hymn number 570.
take compassionate action and go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Mm -hmm.